one ambulance. Rigged with cameras for the first time ever. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Body mounted cameras. Record everything. Oh, it's going to be another two hour session of wearing the man bra. Hello, you okay? Am I turned up? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Apparently, it's going to be a fish oil lens on us and it'll make your face look even fatter than it is. <laughs> Where's the button, Jamie? It's there. We'll reveal what it's really like. So, where are you hurting? To be a paramedic. Hello there, Lawrence. Do you know what? <laughs> High five, yeah, well done, love. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. We get life, we get death. We have a bit of everything. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. We're not in the Bronx. Yes! I think it's red one, let's go. Blue light. Taking you right to the heart of the action. You come for that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the worst bit over. All right. Six two. I'm struggling where to send you. Home. Techno. I really am struggling. McDonald's, McDonald's for breakfast. Yeah. I've missed part of my beard. I think I'm gonna have to cut it off with some tough cuts. It feels like it's really big. Yeah, you have one of the green, oh, yeah, green, green razors. razors. You pooped your pants then, didn't you, Mr. BMW? <laughs> My nan said to me the one day, and normally she's like your nan and grand are really traditional. Like, and she said to me, two women got married yesterday, and I, I knew straight away what she meant. I was like, well, women have been getting married to each other for a long time, but it's it's legal now. It's not like a civil partnership. It's actually legal. Oh, she says, well, anyway, I've been thinking about it, and she clearly had put a lot of thought into how it was going to affect her. And she says, if it's good enough for Elton John, it's good enough for me, and they went back to what she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Great, it's OK. Love it. Love it. It's 4.30 on Friday morning. Hannah Simpkins and Mike Arrowsmith are on the night shift. <sighs> Two and a half hours. Aye. We can do this. This is a rare period without an emergency to deal with. But at quarter to five, they get a call. Job number 405, 145-year-old male. That had a kidney stone operation on Wednesday. Had a stent removed yesterday and now he's rang 111 and we're on our way. They arrive just four minutes later. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello there. <clears throat> is it David, is it? Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. On Wednesday you had a kidney stone removed. I've was that via surgery, was it, or was it? Um, David was discharged from hospital yesterday morning. Okay. But then when he got back home, he had a bout of this bad pain in his kidney, but then after about 20 minutes, it went. Okay. But then last night at about 10 o'clock, it started again, and it was very much like this, rolling round in pain, so I rang for an ambulance. <laughs> they gave him painkillers, took him to a and We've been home an hour. Right. And he's rolling around in pain again. <sighs> Just give me a prescription for some liquid morphine, which obviously I couldn't get because the right, chemist yeah. is not open. In this job, you quickly learn the difference between someone that's, you know, really poorly or really ill and someone who's not as poorly. You just sort of, like, develop a, an instinct for it. So with David, it was obvious quite quickly that he was in a lot of pain and that he needed, needed some help. Whereabouts have you got pain at the moment, David? 
Yeah. On that side. Is that the side that you had the stone? Yeah? yeah. OK. Does it feel similar to when you had the pain the last yeah. few times? OK. Yeah. David suffered from kidney stones for over two years. We'll do some checks on you and that then. We'll get you sorted. So was you pain free when you left the hospital then? Yes. Yeah, yeah, now it's come back. Have you passed water tonight? Yeah. Everything normal there? No. No, in what way? Blood in it. Was it bright red? Yeah. Blood in urine often happens with kidney stones, but it can also be a sign of a kidney infection. Yeah, Is that pain starting to ease? No. Is it still the same? Is it a constant pain that's there all the time, yeah? Did you have Entenox when the first ambulance came? The gas and air, did, you did it work? No. No. <laughs> Does this light come on? Is that all right? Let's put that on. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I'll get you some pain relief for a second. Kidney stones mainly affect middle-aged people and are formed from a build-up of chemicals in the body. Is it the first time that you've had one removed? It's fine, yeah. yeah. The one I've passed. Okay. Yeah. I bet you that was worse, wasn't it? This isn't the best vein in the world, David, all right? So I'm going to have a go on this one. If this doesn't work, we're just going to take you straight up, all right? Because there's no point in waving around, OK? Nice and still for me. OK, just relax. That's it, relax hand. Sharp scratch. OK, David. Pass your sure arm, then. With David, we worked away quite quietly. Mike and I both knew what the problem was, knew what we needed to do, so there was no point in chit-chatting with him in the same way that I would with other people. The best thing for him was just to get him some pain relief and take him to hospital. All right, should we get you ready to go? Let's just get you up there and get you sorted, yeah? Because of the agony he's in, they don't want David to walk to the ambulance. Have a seat, it's on here for us. That's all right, I'll grab it, don't worry. Thank you. Well done, my Well done. One, two, three. Come down. Less than two hours after leaving hospital, David's on his way back. Cold now. Yeah. We'll get the door shut and get the heating on, David, all right. How are you doing, David? Any easier? No? OK. Do you want to try some gas and air just on the way, or...? Yeah? Yeah? David uses the gas and air for a few minutes, but just like earlier in the night, it makes no difference to his pain. Mike, just stop in here so I can get some more morphine a second, mate. Right, let's pass this your arm again, David. Keep breathing your intox if you want to, mate. OK. OK, mate. They arrive at hospital less than five minutes later. The staff in A&E will now look for a reason why David is in such extreme pain. A couple of bumps on the way down the ramp, David, all right. Michelle McNulty and Simon Little are on the day shift. A male of 65, don't know who he's called, but apparently he's having a stroke. He's got slurred speech, however, he is diabetic. Chicken licking. That's what we're going to, chicken licking. We'll get some chicken. We'll get some chicken. Inside the takeaway, Clive has collapsed. Hello, Clive. My name's Simon and this is Shell. Yeah. What's happened? Somebody's about it. I just sat here. 
Yeah. Sat on there. Oh. Well, I just more or less started to do I've got eye pain. OK. Uh, Clive is diabetic. A hypo happens when the blood sugar levels in his body drop too low. You felt like you were having a hypo, is that right? Yeah. OK. And have you had anything to eat since then or drink, sugary drinks at all? Yes, I have. I do know. What did you have? And how much have you had? Full one. A full of pop? No, he's had a bit of pop. He's had a bit of pop. He takes me so long to to come back, come yeah. Back. And you, are you, do you have many hypos? Uh, well, I had one about three weeks ago. OK. I think what's caused it, I think it's really well done. The crew needs to quickly find out how low his glucose levels are. Oh, you are low? 36.5. 1.9. That is a bit low, that is. I was really surprised at Clive's blood sugar levels. Uh, 1.9 is really low. Most people run at a level of between 4 and 8. I've seen somebody at a level of 2.2 and they've been unconscious in a diabetic coma. Put your feet, feet flat on the floor, yeah? Right, ready? Ready, steady, push. Yeah. Take a step back. Right. Feet up, mate. You become very disoriented. Yeah. Tell you what, you're very alert for it being so low. Right. There's a bit of air on here, and hopefully make you feel a bit cooler. Clive is a retired fireman. Today's episode has left him confused. You go just as they drunk. Yeah, I've, I've seen it a few times. Ah. Other than the diabetes, do you suffer with anything else? Uh, they do check me out for hang on. For angina. There's one or two things. Go on then, you tell us what they are. Now, it'll come to you. It'll come to you, you're just a bit confused at the minute. Do you feel sick at all? No. No? no. Do you fancy having uh Having some sugar. Having some of this sugary gel that we've got. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look at it. I'll use oh, good. Glucogel. Oh, yeah. mm. Hold it with your hand, young man. Oh. You got it. Let's have some of that then. Can you well, give it a good squeeze? Good sucky, sucky roo. Well done, Clive. The glucose gel should slowly bring up Clive's blood sugars and stop his confusion. You feel it. You can feel yourself. Go in. Go in. Did you feel it today, that you were going? Yeah. And you had nothing to...? Somewhat. Sometimes, sometimes you give warning out. Mm. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. Do you have them very often, then? Well, I have to watch myself, cos I'm, I'm on the own. Yeah. What, what kind of figure are you at, like, during...? Uh, the day? Around about 10, at least. So you are really low then. Come on, and get all this in you, and then we'll do what you see your blood sugars in a few minutes' time. Attacks like these have plagued Clive for the last thirty years. <laughs> you know, since I've had this, it cost me my marriage, my driving license, my job. Yeah. No, that was the last resort when they took my licence off them. So it's it restricted you a lot then? Yes, yeah. After two doses of glucose gel, Clive's starting to show positive signs. There were 1.9 when we got to you and you'd already had some Mars bar, so they must have been really low. Yeah. But they're 3.2 now, so they're coming Could up slowly. Could we do slowly. getting you some carbs? You've got to remember, though, Clive, eat and drink. After an hour and a half, Clive's blood sugars are finally back to where they should be, and Simon is happy to let him leave. Do you have a little walk around? Yeah. You'll be all right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have a sit in there and have a cup of tea. Oh, good on you. Let's oh. go for a little wonder, go get you a cup of tea. Thank you. 
Simon and Michelle are straight out on another call, but they're still surprised that Clive had remained conscious during such a serious diabetic attack. You can't rush these things. No. I mean... It all takes time. If it takes time, and it's not... He needs to absorb it. Yeah. Get around the system. I can't believe how alert he was for how low it was. Yeah. Can you? Have you ever seen anyone that alert? No, someone of that low before, I was like, they were fitting. Well, when they fit, it's because they're shaking, basically, the whole of their body to try and get any sugar out. and Shane Jones have been called to a two-year-old. Little Leighton's had a nasty accident, falling off a trampoline. Well, you're OK this time. And go. Number three there. The crew's body cameras will record every moment inside the house. What's happened then yeah. today? He's in the back garden on the trampoline, bouncing away, and then hmm. it's just come off it and, like, fell right onto his shoulder. When he moves it, he screams, like, it's painful. And, you know, it's like he's touching, saying so. OK. Has he so, been holding his arm? Yeah, Has he been he's held it. Sort like, of held it still. Sort of just keep, keeping it still, just so, you know, doesn't do anything else. Mm. Have a little feel on your arm. You're going to have feel your arm. Where's it hurt? Can you point to where it hurts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. While Leighton didn't lose consciousness, he's been very quiet and drowsy in the 13 minutes since the accident. Is it all right there? Is that it? Broken okay. any bones or anything before? No. He's very, he's a very cautious child, to be fair. He knows, yeah, very cautious. Which so quite sure. Sit off me. Pass me this hand and I'll help you. Have a little feel of this side as well. Is that here? How his legs? How did he get back up? Did you pick him up? Did yeah, he get up I just himself? Yeah, just went out and picked him up. Picked yeah. him up. Okay. Has he walked around since? No. 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 But it's literally just shoulder. No, yeah. beyond me playing pain anywhere no, else. Well, like, every time he's like, you know, say he comes to scratch his face, he's gone to the line and he's screamed with the pain. Okay. Leighton only wants to cuddle his nan. He's not yet had anything for the pain, so they give him some paracetamol. Take some last special. Oh, have you got? Have you met? Yeah, do you want to give it to him? Skill. Make you feel better. You've got to have it and make you better. <laughs> That's it. Aww. There we go, baby. Are you OK? There you go. That makes you feel better. It doesn't look dislocated at the moment, anyway. But it's still worth an x-ray, cos you never know with okay. kids. To minimise any further damage to the shoulder, Hannah wants to put Leighton's arm in a sling. Yeah. yeah. I've got a special bandage for you. You're going to put your arm in a bandage, look, and make you better. Yeah, yeah. you have to. <laughs> you know, you have to do it. And then that means you haven't got to hold your own arm, then. Hey, yeah, let's put a little bandage on it. Hey, hey baby. baby. He might be happier yeah. just holding it himself. Yeah. You don't like it? No. From the way he landed, Leighton could have broken his collarbone, so needs to have an X-ray. <laughs> On the ambulance, Shane tries to keep him occupied. Look, can I play with it? Just press that, look. Press that button. Don't you want it? No? Oh. See, I had good move, but it sort of moved it then, didn't it? Yeah. A couple of minutes into the journey, Leighton falls asleep. But that makes him harder to assess for signs of concussion. So Shane wants him awake. <laughs> Leighton. Wakey, wakey. Are you tired? Hmm? <laughs> the only way to keep him awake is constant entertainment. Should we try and make an elephant? Should we make this into an elephant? Be a baby elephant. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Another one now. Look, this is mommy elephant. This is. 
It's a hand. Oh, you're very clever, aren't you? Right, there we are. Hello. Hello, Mr. Glow. Shane manages to keep Leighton awake for the whole journey to hospital. Look really pretty. Wow. Somebody's had a productive, uh, productive journey, haven't they? <laughs> We've had fun. No. No. <laughs> well, I have. Let's take your safety belts off. This has all been for Shane's benefit. No one else's. <laughs> the pain relief they gave Leighton at the house has worked. A and E staff will now X-ray him and find out what's happened inside his shoulder. Can you hold on to that later? Don't don't drop him because the wind. A lot of people tend to ring 111 instead of 999 because they, they realise themselves that they don't actually need an ambulance and therefore just want some other kind of treatment or some advice or something like that. Unfortunately, the way the system works sometimes is that you end up with an ambulance anyway. Talking to someone over the phone is not the same as seeing them in person. You can only go on what the person says, so therefore you're always going to err on the side of caution. A lot of people knowingly abuse the ambulance service. Yeah, definitely and they think it's just them that's doing it. So it doesn't matter if they use an ambulance as a taxi because it's only them that's doing it, but it's not, is it? No. The NHS is also at a breaking point, it isn't is. it? It can't, it can't sustain the amount of, of calls that we have. One of the most frustrating thing is, is when you turn up and then they shout out on the radio that there's no crews to send to a red one cardiac arrest. Someone that is genuinely ill, they, they need an ambulance, and we're stuck, unfortunately, with someone that's not not ill at all, just wants attention. If people just used their brain and looked after themselves and only went to the doctors if they needed it, the doctors would have appointments, and then the ambulances would be able to deal with life-threatening emergencies rather than things that we shouldn't even be going to. We never used to get this many things have Sickness, changed. Diarrhea, chest yeah. infections. We need to start charging people when it's who, inappropriate yeah, it ambulance is, yeah, service use. That's what we need to do. I'm not Michelle McNulty, I have an acting name. Oh, OK. Yeah. Kitty Kapow. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Kapow, 24 years of age. <laughs> it's early afternoon. Hannah Simpkins is on shift with Michelle McNulty. Before this job, Michelle spent 10 years in the RAF. In the six months she's been on the ambulance, one of her most challenging cases was her first cardiac arrest. It came through at Lloyds Bank, Blockswich High Street. And I just remember getting there and just being like, <laughs> wow, I don't know what I'm doing. But thankfully, we had, well, another crew turned up. Um, there were about four coppers there who could help out with chest compressions and stuff. I was ready to go, but then they called it in the back. Oh, really? Yeah, because we, we worked on it for 40 minutes. Oh, OK. Um, but the hardest part about it was that they... Because she was only 50. Um, and her 80-year-old dad was put in the front with me. And so my crewmate wrote the news to him. But then they went off to do the paperwork and they just left him with me. And I just had to console him. And I'd, ne I'd not been put in that position either. Um, it was just really tough, you know. No one should have to see their child pass away, really. Yeah. Bless him. 999 Their next call is to a man with heart problems. He's 79 and is suffering from a build-up of fluid on his chest. Arrived in room. 
in there on the, on the left. Hello. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, hello. hello. Yeah. What's your name? Glenn. 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 I'm Michelle and this is Hannah. Nice to meet you, Glenn. Mm. And I'm Julian, the half nurse. Nice okay. to meet you, Julian. <laughs> So what's been happening then? He's not been doing well for a while, to be honest. So um, I've listened to his chest, poor air entry on the left side. Mm -hmm. Legs are definitely swelling up from when I saw him last. Right, okay. So he's end stage heart failure okay. as well. So we've all been trying to convince him for a while to go to hospital. Okay. But Glenn, you're not Glenn. a big fan, Glenn. <laughs> Fair enough. So this time I said, you know. We really need yeah. to get sorted. Okay. So we've you guys. All right, OK. Glenn has been told he has no more than 12 months to live. Um, his, his pulse seems regular. Yeah, it feels regular. Lovely. Okay. But he is more short of breath than normal. Do you feel short of breath as you sat there, Glenn, or is it more when you yeah. move around? As soon as I move. As soon as you move, yeah. you, it kicks in, yeah. yeah? OK. And how do you feel in yourself other than that? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> OK. Have you got any pain anywhere? In your legs. In your legs are sore, yeah? OK. Yeah. Is that from the swelling, do you think? Yeah. Or do... OK. Can I have a quick look? I won't yeah. poke at him or anything, don't worry. No. <laughs> Glenn has fluid retention on his legs, which often happens to people who have a build-up of fluid on their lungs. Are they both the same? They're both swollen? Yeah. So it's really tight across. Yeah. That looks really sore. Yeah, it's really the bone. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn's blood sugars are low, so he has a biscuit before heading to Walsall Manor Hospital. Oh, chocolate biscuit, there you go. I've been in a minute for John this Christmas. Have you? Yeah. Bobbing backwards and forwards. I'm not you again. He's back again. As long as it's a smiling face, they don't mind, Glenn. Glenn only came out of hospital six weeks ago. All right. Right then, Glenn. A little bit of a bump up the ramp, all right. Glenn's blood pressure was a little low inside the house. There we go. That's your chair on the left-hand side there. So Michelle wants to check it again before starting the journey. Yeah. Was you in? Yeah. <laughs> no. Look at her. Mm. I swear you can just smell other people that were in the RF. Uh, he's got it on his arm. Like, every time she's like, it's it's an an RF. RF. What is that? Whatever. <laughs> you can sense, you've got like spider senses here, haven't you? What did you do, Glenn? A butcher. A butcher? Yeah. In the raft? Yeah, I was the first one to be a butcher in the raft. Really? Yeah. Awesome. No way. 1955. That's quite a nice little claim to be able to make, though, isn't it? That you were the first butcher. Yeah. It was you at Shawsbury. Shawsbury did. I did training at Shawsbury. Yeah. Despite having chronic heart failure, Glenn's only had one heart attack, and that was 20 years ago. But in the last six months, he's got progressively worse. Last year, I was falling into the fiddle. I was cutting the lawn and oh, really? going abroad and everything. Where did you used to like to go? Turkey. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, I love it there. Beautiful. We've been through nice. 24 times. 25? Yeah, That's got to be some sort of record, that is, hasn't it? <laughs> Glenn's heart problems mean he can no longer fly. So where were you based then, Glenn? Started off Bridge North. Yeah. Innsworth. Yeah. What in Norfolk. Yeah. I was there most of the time. So what did you do when you left? Did you do butchery as yeah, well? Yeah, butchering, yeah. And how long did you do that for? 50 years. Really? Yeah. Wow. So what's your favourite meat? Lamb. Lamb. Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? So do you do the cooking of it then? Yeah, I used to, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Linda and Glenn have been married for 15 years. They got together soon after Linda had spent a long time in hospital herself. Glenn looks after you now. You can't look after me now because I look after me now. The staff in A and E will scan Glenn's chest to see just how much fluid is there. How are we doing? All right. Do you want to have a little walk down for me first? Yeah. 
Bukini. I would love to see. You can tell you're a pro at this. <laughs> we'll come and grab you in a minute, oh, all right. Happy, <laughs> mate? Yeah. I have been to a young female in her 20s that's had an abdominal pain after a full roast dinner for 10 minutes. <laughs> have you taken any pain relief? <laughs> no, because I didn't want to disguise any <laughs> symptoms that I might be having. Have <laughs> you tried getting rid of some wind? No. Yeah. <laughs> so we're now going to a 21-year-old month old male. This 21-year-old month, he knocked his head on a wall. You said 21-year-old month. Did I? Yeah, twice. 21 month old. I do apologise then. It's, it's not when people say how old you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I did that wrong for you. It's when people say how old your child? Oh, he's 24 months. Two. Your child is two. Yeah, it's when you go out to like an old, old chap. You go, well, how old are you? Oh, I'll be 81 next year. So you're what, 80. What, 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 so you're 80. Don't put a year on yourself. <laughs> Everybody cracks the ambulance jokes. Like, am I going to strap you into the stretcher so you can't run off? And I've, I've heard people say that and I've thought, I've never said that. Yeah. And then I've said it today. I've said a cheesy ambulance line today. <laughs> It's 11 a.m. Loz Horobin and Mike Arrowsmith have just got their first emergency call of the shift. Laws wasn't due to work with Mike today, but there's been a rotor change. Oh, is this overtime for yourself then, or not? No, I should have been on a 2-2 today. <laughs> I haven't had any breakfast. No, I haven't. Oh, wait, it's all done. Is that classed as your breakfast, then? Well, it's a protein shake. Oh, yeah. Because normally I have, like, a cereal bar or something, or some wheat mix because I'm filming up. Yeah. So I've been having, like... A cereal bar and a protein shake, or like a banana and a protein shake. Oh, does it tend to fill you up, don't they? Protein shake. Not too bad. They've been called to a walk-in centre, where a man has an abnormally slow heart rate. Well, oh, it's the big update. Arrived for your activated. Heart rate 29. Well, Unreadable. I don't think so. No, neither do I. A slow heart rate, known as bradycardia, is usually between 40 and 60 beats per minute in a normal adult. Is it Clifford? Yeah. That's it. Hello, I'm Lars. This is Mike. It, it is. Name. He's coming with a 10-day history of having fits. Um, he knows aware that it comes on, glazes over, and then his whole, whole body's shaking uncontrollably. That's for about 15 seconds. He knows completely aware through all this, doesn't fall to the floor. He kind of deep breathes out and he regulates it, he yeah. stops. Yeah. We're concerned because yeah. he's completely bradycardic. That's how he's been all along. 33, 33. At 33 beats a minute, you'd expect Clifford's heart rate to be irregular. But strangely, it's not, meaning it's the same as a top class endurance athlete. Okay. What we'll do, Clifford, is we'll pop your top on, pop you in this chair, and we'll whiz you down to the ambulance. We'll do another set of. You can't walk. No, I mean, don't whiz me down, you know. Oh. <laughs> Just down the stairs in the jail. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll use the lift, Clifford, don't worry. I was say, put a rope out there and I'll have to. <laughs> I'll give you a piggyback if you like. Honest. <laughs> we'll do another set of checks on the ambulance yeah. to make sure nothing's changed. Yeah. And then we'll pop you to New Cross, OK? Yeah. So, how are you feeling at the minute? Do you just feel a bit generally unwell or.? I don't feel like I normally do. Yeah. One of the symptoms of bradycardia is dizziness and fainting. But Clifford wonders if he's been having strokes. Okay. How old are you, Clifford? 76. You don't look a day over 75. <laughs> yes, you look at me 15. <laughs> Loz wants to do another ECG. Right. Just keep as still as you can for yeah, me, all right? Yeah, yeah. No moving, no talking. Clifford's heart rate hasn't changed. Definitely got no chest pain, Clifford. No, definitely not. Okay. Do you want to 
Just in case your heart rate gets any lower or you feel poorly, we'll pop a needle in your arm so that we can give you something all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People with a heart rate as slow as Clifford are at risk of sudden yeah. cardiac arrest. So Lars is treating this as a full emergency. Might pop the lights on. Yeah. Just going to go across your waist there, mate. Stop your running off. <laughs> Mike's driving, so we've got to pass yeah. the <laughs> I didn't really want to tell him that. <laughs> Loz wants the hospital to be ready for them. Um, I've got a 76-year-old gentleman who's been having seizures over the last 10 days. All his others are fine, but obviously his heart rate's 33. So it should be between 60 and 80 beats a minute. 60 and 80? It should be, uh, for a fit, healthy adult. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a bit low, isn't it? It is. This morning when I got up. <laughs> the worst I've felt for ages. Yeah. She didn't collapse on No, no, no. I mean, when I was in the house, I think the fish and chips and what have you, and uh, watched the match all night. Yeah. But when I went to bed last night, I did have an attack. But I've never had an attack in bed. Bradycardia mainly affects older people, but the other risks are similar to those of heart disease. Do you smoke a cool drink? No. What's your diet like? Do you eat a lot of takeaways, fatty food? No, 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 I only have fish and chips once a week. I assume you don't take any recreational drugs? No. I don't drink. I have a drink of a Sunday. Yeah. I have two or three pints. I'll give you nine out of two. Nine being bad or nine being good? <laughs> Ah, that's for you to work out. <laughs> Clifford needs a full investigation by the cardiac doctors to find out what's causing his dangerously low heart rate. Fifty minutes later, Loz and Mike are back on the road and responding to their next emergency call. But I had a nice fellow though, weren't he, as well? He was just... Yeah, he was lovely. He was just very relaxed and witty as well. <laughs> yeah. It's not often that you actually get people that have a laugh. I mean, obviously... Yeah, yeah. So people generally call us when they're really unwell and they like to be reassured. At the lowest and, point, really, isn't it? Still got a sense of humour. Yeah, definitely. Oh, going to the elderly where they're just... the witty as anything and they just fire straight back at you. Yeah. Whatever you say to. <laughs> what number are we after? Number nine. Simon Little and Michelle McNulty are at the start of another day shift. Where am we going? Where am we going? I should have gone right. They're on their way to an 80-year-old woman who's had a fall in her garden. What's her name? Dorothy? Dory. I wonder if uh, we have to follow the yellow brick road. Hey. I can be the tin man. I've got no heart. Is it well? <laughs> you don't have to agree. You meant to say, oh, don't that be silly, Michelle. Of course you have lie. a heart. That almost not lie. <laughs> Dorothy's husband of 58 years is waiting for them. She's in through She's there. Through the there. Conservatory. Hello, Dorothy. Hello. Oh, what have you done to yourself? I just went out to the dustbin there. Yeah. I tripped up there and I felt my face. Oh, it decided the, the edge of the step there. Right, so it was actually on the concrete yeah. step. And I've got these on. Is that that we threw in the glasses, isn't it? Oh dear. So is it the glasses that's hit your face, or is no, it, it like the step? Out. Well, the whole step, because I felt the whole lot. It came like that. Yeah. Across my face. Like Dorothy, is it just your face and your leg, or is there anywhere else that you're hurting? No, I think I was to try to save myself. So you've put your arm out. Dorothy's husband Brian rang 111 after she fell. But the advisers decided her injuries called for an ambulance. It's hurting me there. It's hurting you there. Let's have it. Well. So you've banged it there, haven't you? 
Okay. So does it does it hurt anywhere that I'm just there? As you're pressing it. Just, here, yeah. just in there. Yeah. Oh, you right. spoiled the beauty, don't you? Oh, don't be daft. I can still see a twinkle in that eye. <laughs> He's a charmer. Uh, uh. Brian and Dorothy first met in their early 20s. They worked at the same engineering firm for 25 years before retiring. They look after each other really well. I think Dorothy was really embarrassed by the fact that she'd just tripped down the step as she was putting the bin out. And I think Brian felt a little bit guilty because he hadn't done it for her, you know. How big was the cut? OK, well, look, it's... Um, an, inch, an inch long. Yeah, 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 just about an inch and a half. Could this be handled at the doctor's? It needs to be closed. Plus, I, I think, it's considering her wrist mm. and the bump to your noggin, it's worth being seen at the hospital. As we get older, and we tend to be have a higher pain threshold and may not notice certain things, mm. some damage, not just to the tissues, but to the bones. So we'll get two birds with one stone. I'll keep an eye on that. They might, they might want to x-ray your wrist. Yeah. Your skin's quite frail, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's my age, you see. I'm wearing it out. She was 80 <laughs> last month. Was you really? Oh, gosh. Congratulations. Hello, look what I'm doing. Give me some <laughs> oh, This is one way to celebrate. <laughs> well, Dorothy, it'll teach you for putting things in the bin. Yeah. Make yeah. him do it next time. He's going out to the bin again, and that was it. <laughs> so that's the, the one at the front. Yeah. You don't want me to drive then? You're welcome to. There you go. Ready when you are, Si. I think we will. Does your driving time? Um, I'm actually a student paramedic. But it's good to know you're doing something worthwhile. Which yes. you are. My yes. word. We're grateful to you for it. Oh, you're welcome. That's what we're here for. As a couple, they were just lovely together um, and just so grateful to Si and I, just for the little things that we did. A lot of the time with old people is um, they think that they can just get on with it. They don't want to be a hindrance or a burden to anybody. It's just their mentality because they've just been brought up, you know, to just get on with things, really. All right, so are you able to hop off first for yeah. me? Catch the ramp, all right. Yeah. Are you all right? Hey, Sean. Thanks for coming. No worries. Not a problem. So I was going to catch you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> You'd have a shot for Andy. Hello, the Scottish in me might do that and then pass you on. <laughs> X-rays showed that two-year-old Leighton had broken his collarbone when he fell off the trampoline. Within a month, the fracture had completely healed. Clifford had a pacemaker fitted the next day to correct his slow heartbeat. He chatted to a nurse throughout the procedure. He's now feeling a lot better. Clive soon suffered another, more serious hypoglycemic attack. This time, he was at home alone. He fell into a diabetic coma and died. It was just five days since Michelle and Simon had seen him.